Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. In this video, we're going to be setting up the USG20W. If you're just setting up the Zywall USG20W for the first time, you probably noticed that the wireless network and the local area network are not connected. In fact, they have different subnets, so there's no communication between them. So in this video, I'm going to go over how to link these two networks so you have communication between them. After you log into your Zywall USG, go to Configuration, open up the Network tab, go to Interface, and then we're going to go to Bridge, and we're going to click Add. And then this window pops up. So just make sure that you have the checkbox to enable this interface. For the interface type, we're going to change this to Internal. For the interface name, Let's go ahead and name this BR1. And for the zone, let's leave that on LAN1. Here I have a brief description, WLAN to LAN1 bridge. You can write this if you want, or you can leave it blank. For the member configuration, you want to add the wireless network that you want to be bridged, and the local area network that you want to be bridged. Each person's situation will be unique. If you're following the defaults, then you're going to want to use WLAN1 and LAN1. If you scroll down, you'll have to choose an IP address for this interface. And the one I've chosen is 172.16.0.1. And this is going to be the new default gateway for my network. For subnet mask, you can either use a default subnet mask or you can use a subnet if you know how to subnet. If you want a default subnet mask, use 255.255.0.0. So if you scroll down to DHCP settings, I want you to make sure and use DHCP server. For the IP pool address start, you'll have to keep it in the same subnet as your default gateway. So what I've done is I've gone up to 100 to start my pool. And I made my pool size of 150. You can make this as large as you'd like. This is just how many addresses are going to be given out dynamically on your network. For the first DNS server, make sure you choose Zywall. For the second DNS server, use from ISP. And then over here in this drop down, choose the first DNS from ISP. As you can see, mine's not showing up right now. For the third DNS server, choose custom defined and choose 208.67.222.222. This is open DNS that anybody can use. So what we've done with the DNS, is any time that we have a DNS query on our network, we'll first ask Zywall to fulfill that DNS query, and then ISP, and then open DNS. And this should help if we have any internet connectivity issues related to DNS. You can put in a Win server if you have a Win server. Leave this as BR1 IP. Under lease time, when you're first setting this up, in case something goes wrong, I want you to change this lease time to 15 minutes. What that's going to do is your IP address that you have for your computer after it's given out by this DHCP server will have to be renewed every 15 minutes. Now this is not good practice for regular operations, but when you're first doing your testing and setting this up, you don't want to be stuck with the same IP address and have to manually release it. So it'll expire in 15 minutes. After you get this up and running successfully and you don't have any problems, then you can turn this up to a day or two, or however long you want your lease time to be. I suggest at least a day, and that way your network is not flooded with DHCP traffic. So when you have this all set, go ahead and hit OK. What you'll see is something similar to my screen right here. You're going to get this infinite loading screen. And mine came back up because I didn't make any big changes to my network, but you, you are going from a completely different IP range to whatever one that you've chosen. So you're going to have to get a new IP address. So the easiest way to do that is to right click your network connection. I am on a wireless right now, but you might be on a wire. Just go to open network and sharing center. Change adapter settings. And if you go to the network that you're connected to and double click it, click on details. If you're still showing an IPv4 address from the old network, it's probably 192.168.something and it's not showing you the new IP range automatically, well, that's because your lease hasn't expired for the old IP address. And so it's time to get a new IP address. So let's close this. The easiest way to do that 
is to right click, disable your adapter. After it's fully disabled, wait about five seconds, right click it, and enable it again. So once you've re enable it, it should be asking the DHCP server for a new address. So let's double click and see if it got one. So we double click, click details, and you should see a new IPv4 address right here with the new subnet mask and default gateway that you set up in that bridge network. If all this looks good, it's time to connect back to the Zywall. Just log back in. So once you log back into your Zywall, it's time to create a policy route. So let's first go to configuration. Let's go to object, address. What we need to do is we need to create a new object. Click add. And for the name, let's name it bridge. For address type, I want you to choose interface subnet. So what we're doing is we're creating a new interface and we're naming it bridge. And the interface is going to contain BR1, which is the new bridge that we just created. When you have this done, hit OK. I can't because I've already created this. And when you're done with that, I want you to go to the network tab, go to routing, and let's create a new routing policy. So click add and make sure this is enabled. You can write a brief description here if you'd like to. For user, we can leave that on any. For incoming, we can leave that on any, excluding Zywall. For the source address, let's choose this new bridge subnet that we created. For the destination address, let's leave that on any. And if you come down to service, make sure this is on any. And that way, this routing policy will not filter any network traffic. It'll let any service go through. After you've selected your criteria, I want you to scroll down to next hop. What next hop is, is any time that your network is trying to reach a destination that is not connected to your network, it'll choose the next hop location, for example, the internet. So we want to change this to a trunk because we're trunking the bridge to the WAN. And after we choose trunk, you'll notice that this trunk is the system default. And we'll just leave that as it is. Everything else here looks good. So let's hit OK. And now you've created a bridge network between your wireless LAN, your LAN, and the internet. If you guys have any questions or need additional help setting this up, feel free to leave a comment or send me a message.